this document, but it will be being captured. Okay. I am going to just see if I can find what the link is, so I can send the link to our friends in. And we're going to try and rattle through this, aren't we? So, yeah, so what is oh. the... Yeah, yes, in theory. I want to get through um, this, and it's okay to ask questions, though, even though other people might not have those same questions. Of course it's okay to ask questions. Um, but what it's not okay to do is to not have the link. Damn it, I closed them. Um, <laughs> closed. I'm going to put the link on the Trello board to the actual video, so later on they'll be able to watch it. Okay, that's, certain, that's more so I can just send it to everyone. So we've got the back channel running, which is Slack. Mm -hmm. But because I thought, keep it simple, I didn't want Slack to be running from this computer as well to save processing power. And we're off. Okay, good. So, let's get cracking. All right, so we're doing the uh, Cambridge International Examinations uh, chemistry paper. It's paper four uh, from uh, 2013, May and June. And this paper is the one with uh, structured questions. So we're going to start on uh, question one. Uh, it says, what is meant by the term standard electrode potential? So uh, you need to answer there to say that the uh, standard electrode potential is the potential of an electrode relative to a standard hydrogen electrode. Um, and you could put in some standard conditions there as well. Um, standard conditions are uh, one atmosphere pressure uh, and 298 Kelvin uh, as the temperature. These are the, the, the standard conditions. So um, you're saying the standard electrode potential is relative to the standard hydrogen electrode and you're mentioning some standard conditions. And do you want to type any of that in as well? Or I don't really know that I can actually multitask, actually. It's, <laughs> I, okay. I'm, I'm finding it difficult to do that. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe once I've kind of got going a bit, we'll have a okay. go. Okay. All right. Um, but uh, if I started trying to write there, mm -hmm. it'd look. Um, uh, uh, no, I mean I'm in type. So like, if you go to here, yeah, that would be that would be bad with it. Yeah. Not it's right. just yeah. a definition. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's an easy one. Shop. Shop. Okay. Right, okay, so, <clears throat> but I have to draw something here, don't I? So, yeah. okay, so the next question uh, follows on, and it's saying, well, we've got to determine the standard electrode potential, ACP, of this particular electrode, iron 3 plus, iron 2 plus. So, whenever you're doing one of these questions, uh, you're expected to. Where's my. Maybe not. Get up, got to touch it. Okay, okay, yeah. that one up there. Okay, so for these kind of questions, uh, you're expected to do, excuse me. It's all right. This is probably take... easier to do undo. Um, oh, is it? Okay. Computer. Okay, all right. Uh, it's all right, don't worry, it's going to take a bit yes. of time. Okay, this. all right. So you. <laughs> no, you to... well, That's it? That's it, okay. So you're going to have a couple of uh, beakers here. One on the left and one on the right. And um, you've got to show that in each beaker you've got an electrode. One electrode there, another electrode over here. And these electrodes are going to be measuring a potential difference. So you've got to have a voltmeter between them. There it goes. And I'm just connecting the wires up to the electrodes there. That's the voltmeter. And sometimes you see uh, this labelled as a high resistance voltmeter because we actually want to measure the voltage rather than allow electrons to run around the circuit. So by putting a high voltage in there, sorry, a high resistance voltmeter, uh, we measure the voltage properly without uh, the uh, current flowing too much through the voltmeter. And then to complete the circuit, uh, just drawing across there, that's called the salt bridge. I'm finding this pen. That's all right. <laughs> okay, all right. So we've got uh, two electrodes, one high resistance voltmeter. Uh, and then 
each of these electrodes is pointing, uh, dipping into some liquid there, some on the left, uh, some on the right. And uh, because we're measuring relative to a hydrogen electrode, one of these electrodes has to be the hydrogen electrode. Hydrogen is a gas, and so we've got to surround that electrode with a bit of glassware here, just like that. And we're going to pump hydrogen in there. That's the hydrogen gas going in. And then in here, in the solution, we've got hydrogen ions in solution. So that's an, some kind of acid. It could be hydrochloric acid, it could be sulfuric acid. But the point is we've got hydrogen gas and hydrogen ions, and there's an electrode here, and you could label that up as a platinum electrode. And because we're under standard conditions, the concentration then of the acid is standard one mole per decimeter cubed. So that's uh, the standard hydrogen electrode, but we're wanting to compare it, aren't we, to the, this electrode over here, iron 2 and iron 3. And the thing you have to watch out for here in your exams is that um, we're asking here um, for the potential between an iron 3 solution and an iron 2 solution. So those are actually both in the solution solution over here. There's uh, iron 3 plus in solution and iron 2 plus in solution. And because they're both in solution, we don't have so far labeled up the electrode. So that has to be a platinum electrode as well. And then because we're under standard conditions, and this is where um, some students make errors because both the iron 3 plus and the iron 2 plus are in solution and we've got standard uh, conditions both of those are one mole per decimeter cubed for the iron 3 plus and one mole per decimeter cubed for the iron 2 plus sometimes students lose a mark by saying that one must be 0.5 mole per decimeter cubed and that one must be 0.5 so it doesn't need to give one, but actually they're both one. Okay. How can, um, could we ever use an iron electrode? Well, does that work? Okay. Well, no, because <clears throat> um, if you put an iron electrode in there, then instead of looking at the uh, reaction between iron 3 plus and iron 2 plus, mm -hmm. you're starting to look at the reaction by introducing iron in there as well. Okay. So you'd then be looking at the reaction, sorry, between iron and hydrogen. iron two plus, yeah. or iron and iron three plus. And actually, you know, you're wanting, aren't you, to focus on the reaction between iron three plus and iron two plus. So that's why you have to have the platinum electrode in there, because the platinum electrode is very inert and it doesn't affect what's going on in solution. Okay. Um, and then the other thing you might label up on this diagram as well is the temperature, we said that before, didn't we, is 298 Kelvin, and the pressure is one atmosphere. Now, atmospheres is um, not strictly an SI unit. So for pressure to be properly uh, consistent, you should have the SI unit for pressure is pascals. So one atmosphere is 10 to the five pascals. Now, <clears throat> they don't mark you down in exams. So if you can't remember what's the <laughs> pressure in pascals, you think, oh, it's just an atmosphere, write down one atmosphere, and I say, okay, I'll give you the mark. Okay. Um, but you know, to be good, uh, you should have SI units throughout, and that gives you uh, 10 to the 5 pascals. Okay. Good, so that's... <laughs> so I'm watching on 4G. Oh, at the same time. I mean, this 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 this, this is the worst. <laughs> Listen, this but it's, it's fun. Just, uh, that's that's basically an idea. 
um, what it's going to look like. So yeah. most people will watch it on a computer yeah. rather than watch it on a phone. Okay. But the quality is great. The audio is great. Yeah. Um, we just need to gradually work on the headlights. <laughs> right. It's okay. It's it looks like it. But yeah, yeah. But, but I, 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 it's been talked to. So. Yes, exactly. but and, and I think just sort of looking over to Grace's work there, it, it looks like we have. You've got very nicely drawn the kind of mess <laughs> that I've got here. Um, and we just picked out a few um, teaching points there. High voltage, sorry, high resistance voltmeter we had there. Uh, making sure our concentrations are right and avoiding the mistake of having 0.5 mol per decimeter cube yeah. for each of the iron concentrations. And the reason that you have a platinum electrode in, the, in there is because it's inert and you're wanting to focus on the iron 3 plus and iron so 2 plus. Here. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly, that's it, exactly. Cool. Awesome. Good, all right, so, uh, good. And scrolling. On this, this okay. One. Scroll the left hand. To just two fingers scroll. Oh, sorry. There's a like. What do you call that? A yes. Um, yeah. I ge a gesture. A gesture. That's no, it. Okay. So you don't, oh, you, I don't do that. Your mouse can be anywhere. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, ne next question then. Um, we've got a few clues from the previous work that we're working on um, electrochemistry, mm -hmm. uh, redox. So even though it starts talking about equilibrium. We've still got that thought in our head that, well, okay, we're kind of talking about equilibrium here, but probably we've got to keep in our heads some ideas about redox. Um, and so we've got this um, uh, equation here, and it's asking us to calculate the cell uh, potential for that reaction. Now, the, the challenge with this is that lots and lots of different textbooks all approach this in lots and lots of different ways. So. Uh, we'll just work through one way now, which I think is what they're looking for here. But be prepared that when you look at other textbooks, they'll approach it in correct ways, but a different way of approaching it. So, and I think this is one of the uh, challenges that the students have, is that many textbooks all approach it in a slightly different way. Okay. So for me, if I was looking at this, um, we've got... Um, uh, this uh, equilibrium that's being set up here. And because it's a redox reaction, you can see that the iron 3 plus is going to I2 plus. Mm -hmm. I would be splitting that down into redox half equations. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So the first uh, half equation. What's that gone wrong? Okay, there we go. Okay. Is you've got uh, the iron 3 plus. Is going to iron two plus, okay? And then uh, when I've got a half equation, I would normally write underneath the oxidation number. So the oxidation number there for the iron three plus is three. The oxidation number for the iron two plus is two. So the oxidation number is decreasing. If it's decrease, decreasing, that's a reduction. And the mnemonic that a lot of students keep in their heads mm. is, do you have, do you know that one, yeah. oil rig? So oil oxidation is loss, meaning loss of electrons, reduction is gain, meaning gain of electrons. So the oxidation number is going down, it's a reduction, so I would say that's an electron gain. Okay, so we need to make sure that we've got uh, the electron being gained over there. Happy with that? All right, so that's one half equation. The other half equation is this one here, isn't it? With the iodide, and that's going to iodine. Okay. Oxidation numbers again. That oxidation number is minus one. That oxidation number is zero. So on this occasion, the oxidation number is going up. If the oxidation number is going up, that's an oxidation. And we know from our oil rig mnemonic, that's an electron loss. So we've got to put an electron on this side of the equation here. And just to balance that up, we've got two of those. This is horribly messy, sorry guys. <clears throat> okay, so we've got our two half equations which we can add together to give our full redox mm -hmm. equation. So, okay. 
So this uh, is the full. Why doesn't that work? Have you lost it? It may be. So, uh, stop playing that one. Does it need to play at the same time? We had this before, and I think it might have been because I changed the size of that. Yeah, okay, let's try again. Okay. Sorry. Mea culpa. Okay, so that's. Oh, there it be. <laughs> so that's. We had our redox equation at the top, and we split that down into half equations. No. <laughs> one is a, one is a re reduction. Maybe hang on. A second. Yeah. Maybe maybe you're clicking this button or something while you're typing. Okay. And and writing. Maybe it's it's switching something else off. Okay. I think I try not to um, see if that works. Okay. So hold it so you're not. All right. I, I don't know what the button does, but I know that. Okay. All right. I'll try and. And this one here is an oxidation. They can be combined yeah. to give the redox equation. Mm -hmm. And so that then says you've got to look up in your data booklet uh, the various uh, cell potential, uh, electrode potentials. So if you looked up in the data booklet for the electrode potential here, for the reduction, what have you got for that? Uh, point zero, uh, zero point seven seven. Yes. So that's zero. It's always good to have the positive or negative signs. Yeah. Okay, and that's false. Um, now, in the uh, data booklet, mm -hmm. these are always written as reductions. Mm -hmm. So w w whenever you see these, they're written as reductions. Yeah. Okay. But we know that the other half of our uh, equation here is an oxidation. Yeah. So that means that we'll see this equation, but the other way around yeah. here. Because I've written an oxidation, which is what we want, but they're listed as reductions. So it's the other way around, isn't it? So instead of plus 0 0.54, it'll be negative. Yes, exactly. So we've got that. And then to, to get uh, back from the reduction and the oxidation, the two half equations, back to the full redox equation, we're adding the two half equations together, mm -hmm. which is this, then means we're adding these two uh, potential differences, uh, potentials together. Mm -hmm. And so we're adding plus 0 0.077 and we're adding negative 0 0.52. Okay. And that gives us 0 0.2. What was it? Uh, I Two, three. Zero point two three. So that's a five four, isn't it? I can't even read yeah, my own. Five, four, yeah. So two three volts. Okay. And normally when you give an answer to be completely unambiguous, you'd either label it up negative or positive. Yeah. Okay. And it's is that the way that you, you worked it out or um I was a bit confused in terms of the negative and positive signs. Yes. But well this is the thing, is that um the way I did it there was to break the redox equation down mm -hmm. into two half equations, work out which was the reduction, and I can read it straight off there. Yeah. I can read the oxidation, but I, knowing that those are reductions, mm -hmm. I have to turn it, the equation around, and yeah. change it from negative to positive, and then combine the two half equations to give me the full equation. So I, I think that's the simplest way to tackle that one, yeah. but it is a difficulty of getting all these um, positives and negatives sorted mm -hmm. out and, and different books will show you lots of different ways yeah. and the way we went through there is just one way I think it makes sense yeah. but uh, other books will take it in a different way mm -hmm. did you uh, and so if I was if I was tutoring then I'd ask uh, Grace to kind of talk it all back to me um, just to make sure that uh, Grace has understood what I said but it yeah because I often find that in tutoring, it, it's, it's you know I can talk for a while, okay, and then if you say it back, then we know that uh, you know, we understood it. But yeah, yeah, I, I get that. It's all, but it's not. But it is in tutoring, so it's you know. Okay, that's the kind right. of okay. All right, you have, have to um, yeah. sort of flex what we're doing a little yeah. bit. So, okay, so, all right. So you crack on through the. Uh, okay, all right. So next question then. We've got to state. 
So we're just going to write something down and we've got to give a reason. So there's obviously two marks here, whether it's going to be more products or reactants at the equilibrium. And the point that they're looking for here is that when you've got a positive cell potential, that's described as a spontaneous reaction. Mm -hmm. So the reaction as it's written is spontaneous. It's going to happen. The reaction going back the other way, because they've written this as a reversible reaction, isn't going to happen. Okay, it's not spontaneous. Okay. So um, when the question says here, will there be more products or reactants? Well, it's going to be spontaneous going left to right because we've got a positive value for the cell potential. So there's going to be more products than reactants. Yeah. So, so um, the answer there is there's going to be more products. And the reason for that is it's uh, a forward reaction, spontaneous, because the cell potential was positive. Why does a positive, so why, does, why is that spontaneous? And All right. Okay. This is, so, um, in the syllabus that you looked at last year, did you look at um, uh, the topic of entropy? Yeah. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, yeah. Okay, so the criteria for something being spontaneous is that entropy increases. Yes. Don't you remember that? Yeah. Or entropy is the amount of disorder. Yeah? So, you might say the criteria for something being spontaneous is that. S increases, all right? And um, there may be part of a syllabus that looks at the uh, relationship between entropy or Gibbs free energy and the cell potential. Yeah. And when you look at those equations, you see that, um, that if the cell potential is positive, that's the same as entropy increasing. Yeah. Okay. So we, it, it'd be a lot to sort of dig into that now, but yeah, um, yeah I, I know. Maybe. But the, the the underlying reason is that um, the entropy is increasing, and there's a, a bunch of equations that relate the cell potential to something called the Gibbs free energy. Yeah. And the Gibbs free energy is related to the entropy. Yeah. Now they're not asking for that there, but that's that's yeah. a really that that's a really very good question. So. Um, all right, so um, two things. Just this, that's yes. it. okay, good. So I, I was clicking there, wasn't I? Okay, yeah, and it's got uh, inertial scrolling. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> all right, so the equilibrium constant you have to know how to um, write that out and. You should be able to create an expression for the equilibrium constant from looking at the reaction and its stoichiometry. So, on the uh, for the equilibrium constant, you're going to have on the top, and those square brackets indicate um, concentrations. Yeah, you're going to have the concentrations of the Fe2 plus, and because the stoichiometric coefficient is two, you're going to have the concentration squared. Okay. And then the other product is iodine, and its stoichiometric coefficient is 1. We don't have to put that in. It's implicit. And then the uh, denominator is the iron 3 plus, and that has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, so it goes in there. And we've got iodide ions, again, stoichiometric coefficient of 2. So that's the expression. We've got to state its units. So for units, you've got uh, units of concentration are moles per decimeter cubed. And here you've got moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed on the top. And then you've got um, moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed <laughs> times moles per decimeter cubed times moles per decimeter cubed on the bottom. Um, and so they all cancel each other out, and you should end up with 
on the bottom of that expression moles per decimeter cube. Yes? Yeah. And because it's now uh, the inverse of that, then you'd express that as moles to the minus one decimeters cubed as yeah. your units for the equilibrium constant. Yeah. Okay? Great. Which I think you got. Yeah. Okay, great. You have to watch that as well because in, um, particularly in American textbooks, and that's why it's interesting on this um, uh, CIE paper, um, the British textbooks always have units, the equilibrium constant, but the American textbooks have it dimensionless, no units. And I wasn't sure with uh, Cambridge International exams whether they went for the American way or the British way, yeah. and they're jumping for the British way. So again, that's just something to watch out for, that you could suddenly be reading some American textbooks and they say that it should be dimensionless. Okay. okay. But for as far as, you know, because they're making the point of asking for the units, we have to know how to work out the units. Cool. And they ask for the units. Yeah. So. Brilliant. All right. Good. <clears throat> Okay, so the um, from the previous page we had um, iodide ions, didn't we? And the reaction's going this way. We worked out that it was spontaneous in this direction. Mm -hmm. And that's making iodine. And to balance everything up, combining the two half equations, we had Two of those, two of those, two of those, and the stoichiometric coefficient for iodine was one. And then it's telling us we've got some concentrations at equilibrium, so we know the concentration of that is two times 10 to the minus four moles per decimeter cubed. And we know the concentration of the iodine is one times 10 to the minus two moles per decimeter cubed. All right, so, just looking at the stoichiometry, then the, um, the concentration of the iodine is going to be the same as the concentration of the iron. So that's 2 times 10 to the minus 4. And on this side, the stoichiometry is that if you've got uh, the amount of iodine is 1, the amount of iron 2 is 2. So that's going to be 2 times that, isn't it? So you've got 2 times 10 to the minus 2 moles per decimeter cubed. So we've just uh, looked at the equation, worked out the stoichiometry, and then we use uh, that to plug all those numbers in to the expression that we came up for the equilibrium constant just now. Yep. Um, so we've got uh, 2 times... A tiny bit bigger, if you like. 10 to the minus 2, and that was being squared, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. And we've got the concentration of iodine, which is 1 times 10 to the minus 2. And then uh, the denominator is we're doing 2 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's all squared. And then we've got 2 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's all squared. So if you work that all, all out, mm -hmm. then you end up with... Okay. Okay. I mean, are the units for that, because we worked them out earlier on, should be given, which was moles minus one decimeters cubed. And at this point, we can just have a quick check, because would you say the equilibrium constant is large or small at that point? It's big. Yeah, it's two times 10 to the nine. And when you get big equilibrium constants, does that mean you've got mostly products or mostly reactants? Mm. Well, I'm going to say mostly products. Good. Yeah, that's right. When the equilibrium constant is big, you've got mostly products. Uh, and so that we can just check back to what we said earlier on. Uh, because earlier on, there was a question for us to predict, would we have mostly products and mostly reactants? Yeah. And we said, oh, we think it's mostly products from the fact there was a positive value to the uh, cell potential. And then yeah. you asked a question about you know, why is that yeah. the spontaneous reaction. Um, and, and now we've done the calculation and it's true that the equilibrium constant is large and that connects back to the answer we had earlier. So just as a kind of exam technique, you'd say, oh, this is a really big equilibrium constant. And even if we guessed 
the question earlier on, we can go back and say it's definitely mostly products because we've got a big, big equilibrium. Yeah. With, can I ask something towards yeah. that question? With that one, I, I came up with there would be more products. Yes. But my reasoning was because I thought iodine, iodine would rather be in its ionic state, or well, it prefers to be in its ionic it's opposed to iron. So iron, iron would. It's easier for iron to go to. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. I understand. So the, the answer they're looking for there is that um, the products are favoured because the forward reaction is spontaneous. Okay. Which means it's going to happen. Yeah. It's just. It's just. But so you are sort of right. The reason that it's favoured is because of the difference in potentials and mm -hmm. the difference between the affinity of electrons and all that sort of stuff, but they don't want that level, do they? No. So I think if you check the Mark scheme, it says yeah, it's, more it's products like yeah. and the cell potential is positive. Um, and if the cell potential is positive, then the reaction, the forward reaction is spontaneous. Okay. So that, that's the best language you, you, you could use there. Um, and then you've got this opportunity to check at the end that you were right because yeah. you've ended up with a large equilibrium constant. As a rule of thumb, if the equilibrium constant is one, then you've got about the same amount of product mm -hmm. and reactant. If it's much bigger than one, you've got mostly product. If it's much less than one, you've got mostly reactant. Yeah. So that's a kind of rule of thumb that you can nice. use to, to do a quick check. Great. Cool. Can I pass the pen to Grace? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just joking because because oh, yeah. because so, well, well be actually, actually, you know, you could you could be speaking and they could and and the students could be annotating. Yeah? Okay, it's just I was just joking there because this this looks like kind of two year olds. Well, <laughs> <laughs> have you done that bit? Yeah, we've done this You've whole done page. It. Okay, all right, yeah. So we we didn't fill in the the, the spaces there, did we? Fine. Okay, so yeah. that bit's but, a tiny but bit smaller. Well, yeah, okay, Grace, okay. why don't you write this bit? Then? Yeah, the pen. <laughs> okay, so for this one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, he just talked through and Grace can annotate, see how that works. Okay, do you want to have a go? Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. so um, <clears throat> the reaction here is ether FNOH is hydrolyzed slowly by water. Um, and you can see we've got a couple of products on the right hand side, an acid and an alcohol. Mm -hmm. And this question is all about kinetics, it's all about how fast or how slow a reaction is going. Yeah. Um, so uh, they've, and they're carrying out two experiments. Uh, the first experiment they carried out at a concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter cube for the hydrochloric acid. And then there's some more data down the page, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to. to uh, you make it smaller? Uh, so it says uh, they, they repeat this experiment and the only thing they change is the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. <laughs> oh, that was a long process. Yeah. To Damn it. They double it, don't they? Okay, so. Yeah, so they're, they're doubling the concentration mm -hmm. of hydrochloric acid, and they've repeated the whole experiment again. Um, they've got these results, mm -hmm. and so the first task is to take those results and plot them on the graph. Yeah. Do we need to do that? Uh, I mean, I, I guess. That's fine, right? Because later on we're going to have to use the graph, probably Should. draw tangents and things yeah. like that. So it cut and you know it's 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 a tricky one, I think, uh, in terms of doing these kinds yeah. of. Um, Should uh, I do a rough line? Yeah, as to where I mean, you've got your points yeah. more or less. Why don't you do that? So. Okay. So they start at the same start starting there. concentration, and they've doubled the acid concentration. So is the reaction going to run faster or slower? Faster. Okay, so we'd expect more okay, of I'm the not reactant. Getting a pen. There you go. Oh, there we go. And this means that the the reactant is being used up faster. Yes. Yeah. So getting that. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, it doesn't good. actually go down to the bottom, does it? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we've doubled the amount of hydrochloric acid, and the reaction is happening faster because the product has got used up more quickly. Okay, good. And uh, we drew the line of best fit. Normally, like in, in yeah. maths, you'd kind of use your wrist and do all that. Yeah. Um, and it says, use one of the graphs to show the reaction is first order with respect to the 
Um, uh, the, 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 to the reactant ethyl yeah. ethanoid. All right, so there's a, a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, the first one is actually to measure the rates because uh, to show that something is first order, you'd have to show that the rate is proportional to the concentration of the ethyl ethanoid. So at this point, I'll be writing rate in the proportional symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you've got that one, yep. Yeah. To the concentration, you've got your uh, square brackets. Oh, uh, did you, sorry. Yeah, you'd, you'd normally do square brackets for concentration. Mm -hmm. And it's this uh, compound here, isn't it? The ethyl ethanoid. <laughs> okay, that's not that. <laughs> it's all right, we're learning, we're working okay, on it. Okay, all right, okay. yeah, we got it. So, and for a reaction to be first order, mm -hmm. you'd have uh, that rate um, um, proportionality. For second order, you'd have a proportionality where you'd put uh, a, a square. Yeah. And for third order, you'd have a rate proportional to the cube mm -hmm. of the concentration. And you can have zero order reactions yeah. as well, where yeah. it's uh, rate is proportional to that to tau zero. Okay, so, and they're asking us to show that this is proportional at first order, so it's just a one up there. There's a d direct proportionality between the rate and the concentration. So, <clears throat> what you could do is you could measure the rate. So, uh, if you go back up here, to measure the rate at any particular time, you can draw a tangent, mm -hmm. and that's a measure of the rate. Yeah. And then you work out uh, the change in y divided by the change in x, mm -hmm. and that will give you a rate. And it will give you a rate in moles per decimeter cubed per minute, which is yeah, the x as well. We'll just talk, talk it through for the moment because it's quite a lot to. Yeah. So <clears throat> you'd have to come up with uh, two rate measurements mm -hmm. and then show that the rate was directly proportional to the concentration. So that's the kind of, that that is um, e exactly doing this, you'd have a couple of rate measurements, a couple of concentration measurements, and you'd show that if you doubled the concentration, you double the rate. Okay. That, you, that you're showing this uh, proportionality between rate and concentration. Okay. So that's one way to do it. Yeah. That's the easiest way because you can see that this is first order yeah, and yeah, you, could, yeah. you could just write double rate, sorry, double concentration, double rate, mm -hmm. and you're done. The other way is to say that um, for first order reactions, mm -hmm. they have a constant half life. Yeah. So that's something you have to kind of remember. Yeah. Whereas is this is, is kind of almost sort of blinding the obvious that right. you compare the concentration, the rate. So sure. for first order reactions, you've got a constant half life. Yeah. And that's just one of those things you have to remember. Yeah. Whereas this one we could work out by ourselves. So yeah. generally my rule of life is to try and remember as little as possible mm -hmm. and work out as much as possible. So if, if, if this was me in the exam, I would be doing this. Yeah. Because I could just say, oh, first order, yeah. concentrate yeah. 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 Absolutely. But actually yeah. remembering, I think, oh, is it first or second order of proportion, you know, uh, mm. constant half-life, mm. you know, that's a kind of isolated fact that is not tied to any particular okay. other knowledge. Um, so if you're good at sort of photographic memory, I mean, that's a good <laughs> one to do, but it's one of those hard ones to remember. Um, but you could look in here, and in terms of the half-life, you would see what was the time that it took for the concentration to half. Mm -hmm. So from two to one, the time that it took was about 62 minutes. Yeah? Yeah. And then to half again, we'll be yeah. going from 10, ten to 5. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to almost off the edge down here, half isn't it? That grace to um, yeah. So uh, if it's going from 10 to 5, it's going from about 62, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 All the way over to 5, which, which is be, yeah. there. Yeah. I did it on my graph because it worked. So oh, yeah. I did it with the half life. And oh, yeah. if okay. you do it on your own graph, mm -hmm. there's enough space then. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. But, 
Um, so I got uh, about 62 minutes for the first halving, mm -hmm. and it's going from 125 to 62, so that's 63 minutes. So good as yeah. so, so yeah. Good? So we've got a constant half life. The yeah. first halving was 62 minutes. The second halving was about 63 minutes. We've got a constant half life. So e either of those shows that it's a first order reaction. Um, which one did you do? I did the half life. Okay, because you remembered. I just as yeah. a fact. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but you know th this is the, the thing with uh, chemistry. If, if you can work from principles and work from um, you know working things out rather mm -hmm. than remembering them, then you're reducing the kind of cognitive load of, of, of things that you have to mm -hmm. remember. Okay, good. So um, then you've got something very similar to do with uh, hydrochloric acid here. We've, if you look back to the question, they were doubling, weren't they, the concentration of the acid from yeah. point 0.1 to point 0.2. So if it's first order, you double concentration, you should double the rate. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of uh, a first order reaction. And um, on this occasion, I guess what I would do would be to take um, the so-called initial rate, which is the gradient yeah. when the reaction starts, and look at the gradient for 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid and the gradient for 0.2, calculate those gradients and show yeah. that when I double the acid concentration, I double the rate. Because that's that's the that's a natural meaning mm -hmm. of first order reaction. Is that what you did or? Uh, yes, I ended up looking between those two lines, but I didn't look at So you got you got some gradients, and you showed that when you doubled the concentration, you doubled the rate. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good. Okay. So <clears throat> this is interesting. Um, so the rate equation. What if I could just borrow the pen for a moment? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, thanks very much. So. Um, oh. Uh, It'll be plug and play, so it works perfectly. Okay, so if you we're going to write the rate equation. So we've got um, here we the rate. Now we we had before, didn't we, that the rate was proportional. The first thing we did was the ethyl ethanoid concentration. Is that right? And you just worked out as well. That the rate was proportional to the yes. acid concentration mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah. And what's the other reactant in the equation? Um, water. Yes. So you you could be saying, well, we why don't we include water in the rate equation? It's one of the reactants, right? And to convert a proportionality into an equality from maths, you just change the proportionality sign to an equality and you put in a, a constant, mm -hmm. all right? So you, you could say, well, that's the rate equation, but with the water that's there, water is, it, it's there at pure water. Mm -hmm. Every, everything else is, is dissolved. The hydrochloric acid is 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed mm -hmm. and the ethyl ethanoic concentration is quite low as well. The concentration of the water is hardly changing at all because it's a pure solvent. Okay, if you work out the concentration of water, it's over 55 moles per decimeter cubed. It's really water's concentrated water, if you see what I mean. <laughs> and so in this equation, it's so much, much more concentrated than everything else. Even if its concentration changed, it might be something like 54. Point nine yeah. nine 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 like something like that. So it's so constant, we can just say, well, actually, the concentration of water is constant, so we'll just bundle it into that constant that's there yeah. already. Yeah. So you can say, okay, so the rate is uh, a rate constant, that should be a small k, by the way, times the ethyl ethanoic concentration times the hydrochloric acid concentration. And because the water is effectively constant, we've yes, included yeah. it in the rate constant. Yeah. So you're automatically so yeah. doing that. Yeah, that's it. Oh, I see. Okay. So, oh, yes. Okay. So then 
I suppose we could have just written that down without any explanation. And but yeah, so this. Uh, scroll, this this one. one. I can't scroll up on here, can I? Uh, I don't think we're no. Okay, all right. Uh, why is it not possible to determine the order of reaction with respect to water in this experiment? Well, okay. the I would say at that point that the concentration of water is unchanged. It's constant. Can we put the mark scheme set at that point? I have it here. So, yeah. What says concentration cannot change? Because it is the solvent or its concentration, concentration cannot change. change. Yeah. Well, it, it can change, but yeah. it's the change is negligible. So um, we shouldn't use up the time now, but at some point you could do something like um, do you know what um, what is the mass of one liter of water? Um, you just had a liter of water. Do you know? A liter? No, that, that's its volume. What's its mass? Mass is volume times volume divided by no. density. Uh, oh, so it's, no, it's just but, um, one litre of water weighs a thousand grams. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And you can easily change grams into uh, amount, the number of moles. And if you work out um, a thousand grams in terms of moles, it works out about 55 moles. Okay. So water is high, really concentrated stuff <laughs> it's concentrated water it's 55 moles per decimeter cube you can do that calculation sometimes just to show yourself but pure solvents are extremely concentrated um, and in this case the concentration of water is hardly changing at all okay okay good okay so you've got the uh, hydrochloric acid, and um, what they've done is that they've shown that the uh, reactant, ethyl ethanoate, that we've seen that its concentration decreases with time, but they're saying with the hydrochloric acid, actually when they tested that, yeah. the concentration of acid stays the same throughout the reaction. Yes. Right? So, you know, what what is something that affects the speed of reaction, but itself isn't consumed? Catalyst. Yes. So did you get that? No, I didn't. Okay. So that's that's a kind of you know if if, if we put that in say GCSE language, mm -hmm. said, you know, what what are the things that affect the speed of reaction, and actually don't get used up immediately? You'd say catalyst. Yeah. And they've asked the same question, but in kind of A level speak rather than GCSE speak. Okay. You see what I mean? <laughs> uh, you happy yeah, with that? Yeah, okay. All right. I have a tendency to speak quite softly, so I, I, think, I, it's, I, I think it's coming over. Okay, so I, I just have to fine. force myself to speak a bit more sort of radio-like. A little okay. bit more. Yeah, but, all right. You know. So just tell me if I'm coming more kind of uh, softly spoken, because that can happen. All right, back to you, uh, Grace. So a little bit of handwriting. So the density of a substance, um, I mean, at, at that point, I would probably be tempted to write just uh, the equation. Yeah. The written or just the yeah, I, I, I think you, you have to yeah. use words at this point yeah. rather than symbols, yeah, just to make it absolutely clear. Okay, you want to check yourself on that one? Uh, it's per unit volume, yes, mm. yeah, you, you started off with a multiplication there, so. What, if that was, okay, it's right. just badly written. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that if, was, is this pen? It doesn't work. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if, if that was a um, equation, you would have written m divided by v. Yeah. Would you? It's just it was awkward mm -hmm. to write it out. Okay, so you had to use a data booklet then to explain why the density of iron is greater than that of calcium. 
Um, so you're looking at in the data booklet to try and figure out why you can get more iron into a certain amount of space mm -hmm. than calcium. All right. So the things that you look up in the um, data booklet then is going to be, uh, first of all, uh, how big are iron atoms compared to calcium atoms? Okay. Okay. Because we're talking about the volume yeah. here. All right. So how big they are. So what would you look up in the um, data booklet when you're looking at the, the, the space or the volume or the size of an atom? Ionic radius. Yes, you could have ionic radius. These are metal radius, ions, or you could have atomic radius. Yeah. All right. So at that point, I would put down just here uh, the atomic radius for iron, or the ionic radius for iron. Um, plus, right? Yeah, so uh, well, put, okay, that's, that's I, tricky because we don't know yeah. whether it's two plus or three plus. So I would, uh, so if Write you had a, no, right, so you've written atomic radius, mm -hmm. so that means it's unionized. Yeah. So you don't know, that's good. All right. So, uh, Tim, to look that up in the data book, the ionic radius. I might have that actually. No, I didn't write that. So it's 0.116. Okay, do you want to put that in? And what were the units for that? Um, nanometers. Okay, nano means? Uh, very, very small. <laughs> <laughs> very, very small. <laughs> 10 to the minus. Nine? Yes, exactly, yeah. All right, and the atomic radius for what was the other one? Calcium? Yeah. Okay, what do you get for that? Um, it's... Point one nine seven. Okay, yep. Nanometers again. Okay. Nanometers again. Okay, good. All right. So, <clears throat> which uh, atom so far is is going to be smaller? Uh, the iron. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then the other piece of data you've got from the data book is the relative masses. Yeah. Okay. So the relative mass uh, for iron. What do you have for that? 55.8. Uh, yep. Any units? Um, MR? Uh, sorry. Remember, it's a relative mass. Grams? So there's no units. It's a relative is a comparison. To carbon. To carbon. Well, All right. Okay. So if we just, it's, it's actually unitless. I'm, I'm just kind of okay. checking as you go along. So, so the, it's a relative mass for iron is 55.8 compared to carbon. And for calcium? 40.1. Okay, good. Okay, so <clears throat> at this point you'd say, well, iron is more dense than calcium mm -hmm. because not only does it have relatively more mass, yeah. the size of the atom is smaller as well. So you've got even more mass in a smaller volume, and so the density is higher. Okay. Smaller. And higher. A bigger mass. Yeah. You normally say uh, a greater mass. Okay. I mean, don't, don't change it. Okay. But that's that's a better kind of sounds better to say greater mass. So, okay, because <clears throat> um, yeah, we were getting one mark for that equation up there, and we had to get these two marks down here. So we're looking both for the atomic radius and these relative masses. Okay. And iron is more dense than calcium because not only does it have a smaller atomic volume, yeah. a smaller atomic radius, but it has a greater mass in there as well. Good. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next one, <clears throat> so we've just, iron is a transition metal, mm -hmm. uh, so this is, we're starting to talk about transition elements here. So in general, reactions of compounds of transition elements can be classified under one of uh, these headings, and you've got to check one tick in each row, mm -hmm. and you've got acid-base reactions, ligand exchange, re exchange reactions, precipitation 
and redox. So the first one's fairly easy. <clears throat> you can see you've got a copper complex on the left yeah. uh, and another copper complex on the right. And you can see that comparing those two complexes, they basically switch ligands. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be ligand exchange. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one, they're trying to trick you up because they talked about acid-base reactions and they've thrown yeah, in an yeah. acid here. But again, you can see all you're doing is switching ligands. Yeah. So you're just taking these six water ligands out from the copper and replacing it with the four chloride ligands. Mm -hmm. So they're just trying to trick you at, at that point. Um, <clears throat> the next one, um, well, you can see here that uh, on the left-hand side, if you do oxidation numbers, the oxidation number of iron is yeah. two. Uh, and on the right hand side, the oxidation number of iron is three. The oxidation number is going up yeah. uh, for iron, it's going down for chlorine. Yeah. Uh, so that is uh, a reduction in oxidation happening together. That's redox. Okay, so um, we, we're figuring all this out. We're not having to remember very much at the moment. <clears throat> the next one you do have to remember uh, you have to remember that uh, iron hydroxide is a precipitate. So you okay. can see here that you've got this, one. Uh, this is iron hydroxide, FeH2. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. So that's just a, a, like a, a fact that you've got to remember. Uh, and either you remember that fact that it's a precipitation, mm -hmm. or you're going to get to precipitation through a process of elimination. Yeah. Is it an acid base reaction? Uh, is it a ligand exchange reaction? Is it a redox reaction? No, you, you could get through. And figure out by process of yeah. elimination. Okay, so that's a precipitation reaction. It does give the marks that it could be an acid base reaction as well. Why does it do that? Okay, uh, can I grab the? Sure. Okay, so. Okay, so you've got. I need some space to work on up here. Okay, can I just work in the space up here? Okay, so you've got you've got uh, to start with. You've got iron with six water ligands. Mm -hmm. Happy. So if, if I just draw one, I can do this. One. Can I draw that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> When you're drawing these, you put the O first because it's forming it, uh, it's yeah. a coordinate bond, a daily bond. They're quite fussy about that in the exams. So on this side, you're doing it like that as well. Yeah. All right. So that's your complex. Yeah. And what did they say? It was an acid-base reaction. So it, it, it could be both. So they're yeah. both. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you were going to do acid-base mm -hmm. reaction, you have to say something like this, that if you look at just look at this one here. I'm getting a bit messy. You've got H2O as yeah. a ligand, all right? And you've got OH minus. Your definition of an acid is a proton donor or a proton acceptor? A uh, proton donor. Okay. So in this case, this whole complex That's is okay. going to mm -hmm. donate a proton to that hydroxide there. All right? So <clears throat> it's so it's done it once from that ligand. You can do it again from another ligand. So it's donated a proton twice. Yeah. And so what you've ended up with is basically Fe. And it's still got the other four water ligands around it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. My writing is appalling. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So it's true that that yeah. was an acid base reaction. <laughs> uh, as well. And the, the proper way of describing iron hydroxide as a precipitate is it's a complex of iron with two hydroxide ligands and with four water ligands. Okay. So that's that's pretty tricky. And I, I don't know whether the syllabus actually looks at that kind of acid base mm -hmm. uh, behavior for iron hydroxide. It's easier to remember that. Um, it's a precipitate because <clears throat> sometimes they'll, they'll say um, add hydroxide to an iron solution and you get a pale green precipitate for iron hydroxide and on standing it changes to a rusty color. 
Okay. So that, that's a kind of test for um, how this one. So the easiest one to go there is just to say it's precipitate. Okay, next one. Uh, so on the left, you've got oxidation number uh, for iron is two. On the right hand side, oxidation number for iron is three. Clearly, that's a redox reaction. Mm -hmm. Do that. Okay. Uh, this next one, um, the, I mean, you, you could, because it's, it's always better to, um, it's, instead of trying to remember things, to try and work from what you know. Yeah. So, for example, here, all you've got is a metal hydroxide yeah. and an acid. Yeah. And when you're at GCSE, a metal hydroxide and an acid made a... What? So when you're at GCSE, mm -hmm. a metal hydroxide and an acid made water and salt. a salt, okay? Salt plus water. So, so th this is just an example of an acid-base reaction. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's really just taking GCSE knowledge and uh, <clears throat> giving you it in A-level terms. So that one's acid-base reaction. Okay, so um, this one here um, is, is again, it's actually an acid-base reaction yeah. for exactly the same reason we looked at iron just now. Yeah. So it looks like a ligand exchange, but in truth, it's a ligand. It's a acid-base reaction, which I think you got. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah okay. Good. Um, <clears throat> and the the last one here again, you can compare oxidation numbers. The oxidation number there is. Uh, plus three, oxidation number over here is plus six. Yeah. All right, so there's clearly oxidation going on. Yeah. The giveaway there, actually, did you see what this chemical was here, H2O2? Hydrogen peroxide. Okay, which is a strong oxidizing agent. Yeah. So for me, I just said, oh, Which obviously sense. this is a redox reaction yeah. happening here, and then you check with the oxidation numbers. Great. Okay. All right, good. That's all we've got time for. Really? Yeah. So we'll have to think about how, how the pace will work. Yeah. And we'll, we'll flex it. Flex, okay. That's good. I mean, the, 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 the quality of the video. Exam. What? It is a two hour exam. Exactly. Which is why I think my general idea of this is to not do it, to go through the paper because. Mm -hmm cover the paper but showing because I think probably 50% of that you knew already but 50% of it was really helpful mm. so I think that the trick is to but to try and get into the it's helpful for who? correct correct it is um, so who knows I mean yeah. listen we might have to change our minds about what we do but I think that it would be I think give us still. it's still recording yeah but it's not it's only going out to our, our people, so it doesn't really matter. But I think um, the, the key would be to experiment and just see. I mean, maybe next time we do, let's try and say, let, let's kind of or maybe work from it, saying, okay, um, given that they have had the mark scheme and they have had time, mm -hmm. they're probably going to work out these things and just might be to start, at, okay, what are the things that you had problems with first? And then start from that perspective. Yeah. And then do those bits first. And then go, and here's a few of them. So that in the hour and a half, yeah. you've definitely covered the questions that they've got as a group. So it's, so it's tailored to our students first. Yeah. And, then, and then if other people go, yeah. To be honest with that paper, like it was only the first two questions that I had found that I had blind spaces. The rest of the paper is pretty. So Perfect. Because we, okay, we had a conversation just before you came in, but yeah, we did. To, to, to do exactly that was to, to work out you know, what things are still outstanding. Yeah. From and that the was the first two. Okay, that's okay. so, yeah. it was Perfect. So you can resource it and say, just shut up, Tom. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So was there anything else? Uh, um, I'm actually pretty good. I, the rest of the paper was pretty straightforward. You're the stronger on the organic, not, aren't you? Yeah. The yeah. only thing that I wasn't sure about is 
DNA fingerprinting and if it's in the syllabus because I can't, I know we did electrophoresis, mm. electrophoresis, phoresis, 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 yeah. whatever stuff, but I can't remember if that's actually part of the syllabus. DNA fingerprinting specifically. Mm. Yeah. And even that, there was something that I wasn't sure if it's part of the syllabus. Apart okay. from that, like a lot of it, pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah, I don't well, think I have like anything marked. Ah, there we are. As questions. Okay. It was literally those two, those first two questions I found hard because I struggle with electricity.